The mess hall buzzed with low chatter as soldiers filtered in, grabbing trays of food before finding a spot at one of the long tables that filled the large room. John finished his meal and pushed his tray away, glancing around at his fellow soldiers. Most stared blankly into space or pushed their food around their plates without eating, expressions dark with worry. Lieutenant Smith strode to the front of the room, clipboard in hand, and the rumble of conversation died off. All right, men, listen up. As you know, our long-range sensors detected an unknown fleet approaching the solar system last night. We've made first contact. Mutterings broke out but quickly fell silent again as the lieutenant continued. What we've learned is alarming. These aliens call themselves the Zelians. Their empire has conquered dozens of other species across galaxy. They show no mercy. Any civilization that does not submit is wiped out. Images flashed on the screens lining the walls, showing ruined cities and remnants of alien cultures the Zelians had destroyed. John examined the pictures of destroyed worlds that the Zelians had sent to convince Earth to give up without a fight. Make no mistake, their goal is complete domination, and Earth will not be spared. Intelligence believes their fleet will reach us within the week. We've sent diplomats to open communications, but do not expect peaceful negotiations. The 15th Armored Division is being deployed to defend the North American continent alongside other military branches. Loadout is in one hour. As the lieutenant finished, an eerie silence filled the room. John turned to Mark, his longtime friend and fellow tank operator. What do you think, man? Can we really stop an entire armada? Mark shook his head grimly. Don't know, but I sure as hell aim to put up one hell of a fight. The hour passed in a blur of activity as soldiers suited up, checking armor plating and ensuring weapons were charged. After completing the inspections on his tank, John maneuvered it into the loading dock where numerous other vehicles were prepared. The briefing played on a loop over the loudspeakers as crews cinched equipment and calibrated targeting scanners. No one spoke much, focused inward despite the noise and chaos around them. These tanks and their crews represented humanity's best chance to turn back the invasion. The weight of that responsibility hung heavy on soldiers. At last, the massive bay doors slid open, revealing a cloudy evening sky. Lieutenant Smith's voice echoed, stern but carrying an undercurrent of emotion. Godspeed, men. Your mission is to defend our home at all costs. Dismissed may luck and skill be with you. The battalion roared to life, engines straining as one by one the tanks rolled down the ramp into formation. John gripped the controls, steeling himself. Whatever waited ahead, he would fight with every ounce of strength and courage. Earth would not fall without a fight. The convoy rumbled east under the rising sun, Mark's tank rolling at the head beside John's. Morning mist clung to the forest they passed, the quite broken only by grinding treads and crackling comms. Squad leaders, check in, crackled Lieutenant Smith over the radio. Each commander reported in as the forest fell away, revealing rugged mountains ahead. As the last tank checked in, a shout came over the lines. Contacts, one o'clock. Multiple heat signatures closing fast. John swung his scanner, spotting tiny pinpricks advancing through the rocky valley below. Zoom and enhance imaging. Those ain't no planes. The alien craft came into sharp focus spherical gunmetal pods skimming low, spitting beams of energy ahead into the valley. Small figures crawled amid the rubble, returning fire on smaller weapons. Infantry in trouble down there. Tanks on me. Let's give them some cover. John slammed the accelerator. John's tank rumbled alongside, main gun priming with a whine. The alien craft swiveled at the new threat, releasing blistering orange bolts that pinged off reactive armor. John targeted the nearest pod, pounding it with high explosive shells that blew it apart. Other tanks firing methodical, blasts reducing the attacker swarm. Through the clearing smoke, 
fleeing humans came into view. John activated external speakers. Fall back to our position, we'll escort you to the rear. A fresh crackle of gunfire answered as more alien craft swooped from the hills. John spun his turret, hammering two pods as they strafed the infantry, but more kept coming, peeling off to engage the human force. We're outnumbered here, breaking formation to draw them off, John told the others. It's time for some evasive maneuvers. Grunting acknowledgement, Mark followed John in speeding back towards the convoy. Their pursuers split to chase both tanks, raining devastation on the rocky scape. John swerved and jinked, counting seconds until the pursuing missiles lost tracking. The reinforcement convoy came into view, heavy guns blazing to support the engagement. Seeing reinforcements, one alien peeled off to harry them instead. John took the chance, spinning to target its flanks. Now! Shell and rocket slammed, obliterating the craft in an orange fireball. Its smoking wreck tumbled away. Tank status, John called. All clear. Let's get these guys and head home. Ten days of grueling battles had taken their toll, but the 15th Armored held the northern front. Intel placed three Zelian divisions massing for a final breakthrough near the ruins of Chicago. Lieutenant Smith called the battalion to the briefing room once more. Satellite scans show the aliens amassing tanks and troop carriers in the city center. A two-pronged attack is our best chance to smash through their lines and cut them off from escape. Smith slapped up a schematic of the outskirts. Beta Company will engage their left flank here, drawing fire from Alpha Company's thrust through the railway yards into downtown. Fix bayonets. We go at 0500 tomorrow. John studied the plan, dread pooling in his gut. So many battles, so much destruction, yet one final push could end this invasion for good. On his shoulder, Mark squeezed reassurance. We've got this, for Earth. Dawn brought heavy fog, cloaking the ruins as tanks rumbled into position under running lights. John peered through the murk, gripping controls tight. At zero, five, zero, zero precisely, bright anti-air flares lit the sky. Now, forward, Lieutenant Smith bellowed over the radio. Engines roared as the battalion surged ahead on parallel paths. Near deafening cannon fire soon responded, Zelian tanks emerging like ghosts from the ruins. John targeted the nearest, shells blowing its hover engines, before a next well-placed shot detonated its engine block. Beside him, tanks blasted another's command hatch. Through the clearing fog, the grim dance of destruction intensified. Claws of shrapnel raked John's hull, puncturing hydraulic lines. Sparks flew as systems flickered offline. We're hit, pulling back for repairs, John told the others. He swung tank behind cover, seeing two hasty patches while calling for supply support. From their position, the battle seemed a raging inferno consuming the city's bones. Pockets of infantry engaged in brutal close quarters brawls amid the wreckage. Plumes of acrid smoke rose as bombs detonated, blown apart by air support now arriving. At last, a repair crew arrived, feverishly welding rents in tanks' armor under fire. With systems restored, John rumbled back into the chaotic fray just as Beta Company broke through. Alpha, punch forward, we've got an open lane to their command post, Lieutenant Smith bellowed. As one, the tanks accelerated through the breach towards a towering skyscraper, Zelian defenders falling back under the onslaught. Inside, Zelian commanders looked to the skies desperately as their fleet withdrew as human tanks surrounded the building. A white flag fluttered from a high window. It was over. Humanity had prevailed, though ruins remained where once proud cities stood. But in those ruins, hope was reborn. Hope that, where humanity stood united, even the universe's most invincible forces could be turned back. Earth would endure and one day blossom again.